car, you got a little kerosene or, or diesel uh, torch heater. Uh, we're gonna talk about this little thing and tell you my opinion and how I feel about it and might even torch this uh, sweatshirt since the team is terrible now. So let's stick around and I'll talk about this. Here's the master torch heater, 1400 BTU. Runs off of kerosene and also runs off of uh, diesel. Um, this is the one I purchased about a month ago. Pretty easy setup the way it comes. Um, the handle, uh, obviously I, I've already assembled it. It's got the main solid axle that goes through and the two nuts, one on either side and the wheels. Put that together, pretty basic. Then this uh, snaps in right here. You can see the little push pins right there. You push those, snaps that in. And then this whole upper bar snaps in right here on either side, little snap pins, you know. And that's pretty much the only assembly that you have when you uh, open it out of the box. I did already obviously take it out of the box, so I can't show you how it was packaged and everything, but it's pretty much it. And um, it's got the little plug, obviously you gotta plug it in. But it's also got where you could piggyback something else off of it. And like if you're using an extension cord to get to wherever you're gonna use it at and you need something to keep going, you can piggyback off of this one. So that's a pretty neat little setup on there. It's got the little hangers where you can wrap your drop cord around that, which I've been doing. So it's pretty nice having that. So then you've got your controls over here. You got the on off switch over here. And then obviously your temperature gauge, you can adjust and everything. And that's where you fill it up and your fuel gauge. So pretty basic, pretty simple. Um, oh yeah, and you gotta install the little guard right here. If you wanted to install, you don't have to, but other than that, that's all the assembly for this thing. And it is very, very good. Uh, my shop is roughly like a three bay garage, not too big. But the little space heater, that I put on a video uh, maybe a year or two ago. It just wasn't really sufficient enough for the size of the garage. I mean, it just took forever for it to even attempt to really heat anything up. And this thing, shoot, you can, I mean, you gotta leave obviously the garage or, or some type of airflow present. You know, there's, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna get all the carbon monoxide in here, but um, this thing heats it up super fast. And I'm talking five minutes maybe 10 at max and it's got my whole shop like warmed up where i'm ready to come out of the sweatshirt or whatever so i have no complaints as far as that's concerned it's very easy to use i mean the only only thing that's very difficult and i don't even want to say it's very difficult is just the way you got to fill it you think that they could make like a filler neck come out and then that be where the cap is so it's out kind of away from everything because this is underneath i mean you can see it's not that easy you got to put a, a fill in there, I mean, a, a funnel in there, and then you can fill it up, but yeah. I'm gonna get it plugged in, turn it on, show y'all how it comes on and all that, so. All right, so you got your plug, and then that, and you're gonna connect those. So once you've connected your electricity to it, I'm gonna come over here, obviously nothing is on right now. You turn the switch on, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down. Maybe it won't kick on because I'm not sure what the temperature is in here right now. But... So right now it's saying it's 46 in here is what this temperature gauge is saying. I've got the adjustment below 40. So I think that's actually the lowest that it will adjust down to anyways. So as soon as I turn this up above whatever the temperature is, it'll kick on. And then that's, what's really neat about it is once you get to the desired temp that you want, it will kick off on its own. So let's... Give this a try. Got to about 55. Control system and all that. Um, I mean, hardest part's getting the uh, fuel, whichever one you want to use. 
I do know when you're running kerosene, it's supposed to be at like, don't quote me on it, I have to look back at the instructions again, but it was just barely over six PSI or, or six PSI is what you're supposed to set it on because it's got an adjustment right here. That's where you adjust. But when it's on diesel, you're supposed to adjust it to a different PSI and not for everything of out of me, I've looked and looked and read in the instruction manual and I cannot find what the PSI needs to be on for diesel. So I'm assuming it would be less than the six running the diesel, but I really don't know. I've got to do a little more research or if any of y'all have seen this and know what it is, definitely shoot, shoot a message on here and let me know. Um, Cause I'd like to know, I'm, I, one day I might want to give it a try and just see how the diesel does and everything since it would be cheaper to run off of diesel. Not sure about soot and all that, if it would cause any soot in here, but I definitely might give it a try and I don't want to have it adjusted wrong for, uh, for the type of fuel that I would use. But I hope this uh, helps y'all out and helps y'all decide on uh, if you want to get this or, or not. Like I said, it's, if you're wanting to just come out in the shop and work for just a quick few minutes and all that and not have to be out here for a prolonged time or or come out here way ahead of time to turn on a, a kerosene or butane heater or anything like that, this definitely is the better option. I mean, it doesn't, I can set it up, you know, 20 feet away from my, or 15 feet away from where my workbench is and all that. And I mean, it. I don't even realize how cold it is outside. It's been in the thirties here. So, I mean, I don't even realize what it is with this thing so yeah i like it thanks for watching we'll see y'all next time